Uh, well, you mentioned Sweep of Stars, so we should talk a little bit about uh, Afrofuturism because you are the resident Afrofuturist uh, at the, I never say it right, it's, it's Kepler Institute, right? Yep, the Kepler Institute. Mm -hmm. So uh, first, please define for us, what is an Afrofuturist and how does that enable you to, as I know you, you give talks uh, around the world at this point, right, as yeah. an Afrofuturist? Yeah, so Afrofuturist, uh, being a resident Afrofuturist uh, at the Kepler Institute. So Afrofuturism is, uh, it, it, so it's futurism. So, and many organizations have futurists on staff, right? People who, um, it's basically their job to project and, and figure out what, what is coming down the pike in terms of, of technology or where society is going to be at or the interaction of technology with uh, where we're moving as a society, things like that. Um, but with Afrofuturism, it's that same sort of thing, except it's all rooted in the African American experience, right? So it's all rooted in the Black cultural imagination. And so with Afrofuturism, what you have is, especially with, with the literary, uh, with, with especially with using the, the you have the critique of the present that is rooted in the past, but always with an eye of what is go of imagining ourselves into the future. Right. And so there's always this sort of retrofuturism to what it is to be an Afrofuturist. And at the Kepler Institute, being that, uh, uh, being that the resident Afrofuturist is sort of like a statement by the organization that says, hey, um, we have a resident Afrofuturist who dreams alongside the other Afrofuturists in, in our organization, people who are dreaming of their, uh, of our desired, you know, future states you know we, we want there's a future we wish to create um that we envision together alongside one another we envision this thing collectively as neighbors and once we can picture this world that we're trying to create we can begin to enact that world now in the present so a lot of the problems that we're facing as, as a community everything from uh, living in a food desert to uh mass incarceration and uh, and the criminal justice system to um, red line, the housing crisis that, that we live in, you know, what, what's our job? Our job is to, uh, it's not to fix the systems that we're in. You no, know, it's because those systems have never served us and making them better is still not going to serve us. But what does it look like to reimagine these systems and reimagine how we move through the spaces that we find ourselves in? So that's, that's the, the job of, of the Afrofuturist. So we're we're having, on the one hand, we're having fun because we're, we're talking sci-fi, we're talking imaginative stories, but we're also hopefully, and when I say we, I mean you, are right. uh, finding uh, solutions to future problems that somebody is, is hopefully going to enact and, and it's going to make the world better, right? Right. Well, I mean, it's, just, it's no different than uh, Star Trek, you know, right? So you, Star Trek paints these uh, utopian visions of, of how we could be as a society, as a group of, uh, as explorers. Uh, you know, they sort of fix all the problems on earth. And so basically, and by doing that, what have they done? They've painted a vision that people can begin to work towards, right? Same thing with Afrofuturism. It's like, hey, we're, we're painting this picture uh, with us in it, mind you. <laughs> so so that, that's part, that's the, as Tanan Reeves said, that's the first act of resistance is imagining ourselves into the future. Um, and it gives us something to work towards.